Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2013. In this section we're going to take a look at copy, cut and paste. I've actually used copy, cut and paste a little during the course already and if you're an experienced Windows user and in particular if you're an experienced Microsoft Office user you're probably pretty familiar with using these tools yourself. So this is going to be quite a quick overview. But there are a few features of copy, cut and paste which are particular to Microsoft Office and one or two that are very particular to PowerPoint as well. So it's worth spending just a little bit of time summarizing the main points and going over those particular features. One or two aspects we'll look at later on as well when we look at putting some drawings etc. into our slides. Now, as I said at the beginning of the course, I'm assuming that you're a reasonably experienced Windows user, and so you've almost certainly used copy, cut and paste before, but I am going to cover a couple of the basics quickly now. The first thing I want to point out in relation to PowerPoint is that you can copy, cut and paste just about anything that's in a PowerPoint presentation. So you could copy a whole slide, you could copy one word or one sentence, and later on when we move on to looking at images you can copy, cut and paste images. The way it works is basically the standard way that it works in a Windows based application. So, for instance, if I wanted to make a copy of a sentence in the speaker notes, let's say I wanted to make a copy of My Name is Toby and I am your host for the day. First of all, I select that. Well, you should have no problem selecting a sentence. And when it's selected, it's then a candidate to be copied or cut to the clipboard. The main commands on the button for doing this are on the Home tab in the clipboard group which is up there on the left. The cut button is the top right, the copy button is the middle right, format painter at the bottom, don't worry about that at the moment, the paste button is the one on the left there. The paste button is in two halves, it's got a top part which is a straightforward part and the lower part which we're going to look at a little bit later on. So let's suppose at this point that I want to make a copy of that sentence. If I click the copy button, nothing appears to happen but it has actually copied that to the clipboard. If I then click with the cursor at some other point in the speaker notes and then go back up and click on the paste button, I will have pasted a copy of that sentence into the location in the speaker notes. Now one thing that I might mention there that sometimes really annoys people and that is that if you take a sentence like this one my name is Toby and I'm your host for the day you copy and paste it you think well what happened to the blank line after that sentence well that's really a matter of how you selected it in the first place but what I'm going to do is to undo that paste and now I'm going to go back to that first sentence again I'm going to select it but this time I'm going to select it and the blank line underneath it. You'll see how the selection mark now indicates I've got the blank line as well. But this time instead of clicking copy I'm going to do a cut. Now one option for copy, cut and paste is to use keyboard shortcuts and these are keyboard shortcuts that I use all the time because they're just about universally consistent across Windows applications. So to cut this I'm going to use Control and X Note, when you do a cut, what you're cutting disappears. It still goes to the clipboard, but it's gone from where it was before. When you do a copy, it stays there. You're making a copy. Now let me click down before the word U again. And to do a paste using a keyboard shortcut, it's Control V. And with Control V, I now get the blank line after it as well. And there you have the basics of copy, cut and paste using either the commands in the clipboard group on the home tab or using the keyboard shortcuts. Control V to paste, Control X to cut, Control C to copy. Now let's do a copy, cut and paste this time within a slide but let's do it using touch. I'm going to take this second slide, click on that and we're going to move the first item in the list there, slides down to being below paragraphs. So we're going to cut it from where it is and paste it before drawing. 
Now, as we saw earlier, when we want to work in touch, there are various ways of making things easier. I can certainly go into touch mode, and I can do things like, for example, I can suppress the notes at the bottom. So tap on the notes button in the show group on the view tab. Notes are gone. And then I can use the zoom control, say, to fit this slide to the window. So if I click on fit to window, again on the view tab, but this time in the zoom group, my slide is a lot bigger for me to work with. I could, of course, make it bigger still if I wanted to, but that should be enough for now. So first of all, let's select the word slides. Cursor is in place. We just we just pull the selection handle down one so that we get both the word slides and the end of line after it. And then we can either use the commands on the ribbon, so we could go back to the home tab and the clipboard group, or of course we can use the mini toolbar. and on the mini toolbar I have command buttons for cut, copy and paste. So on this occasion I'm going to tap on cut. Now I'm going to basically move the cursor down one so I tap to the left of the word drawing next and now I can do a paste so all I have to do is to tap on the word paste on the mini bar and I've moved that entry in the bullet list down to be in between paragraph and drawing. So that's how to do the equivalent operation using touch. Now don't forget, whatever you're doing, I really did that as a demonstration, don't forget that you can always undo what you've just done. And in touch mode, of course, you've still got the same buttons on the quick access toolbar. They're just spaced out a little bit more. So let me just tap on undo. The undo there undoes the paste. If I tap again, it undoes the cut. So to go back to where I was, I need to undo both operations. Now just let me tap elsewhere, and my slide is back to being the way it was before. Now I'm still in touch mode, but I'm actually working with mouse and keyboard at the moment. A couple of things to point out here that are quite important. One of them is that although copy, cut and paste you're going to use quite a lot while you're working with PowerPoint, there are also alternatives. For instance, let's take that same slide again. If I were to actually select the word slides and then click within that selection with the mouse, I could actually drag it. I could do what's called a drag and drop instead of a cut and paste. That will work with images, photographs, text, so on. It takes a little bit of getting used to. Of course, you may be using that already regularly in your use of Windows. But that's a good alternative to cut and paste. And if I just do that back again, but this time, after I've made the selection, I hold down the control key. Let me drag that up with the control key held down and then released. You actually make a copy. So that's worth knowing about as an alternative. And then one other thing, if I just go back to the home tab on the ribbon, to the clipboard group, I mentioned the paste button has a lower part. Let me just click on that lower part. It brings up a set of options, paste special. Now I'm not going to go into these in great detail now, but let me just hover over one or two of those little icons. If you have some text copied to the clipboard or cut to the clipboard and the text has some formatting such as say a font color or a strike through or something like that when you copy or cut and paste that into another location in your presentation you may or may not want to keep that formatting so if I say I had a slide with a font color a lot of text in that font color but I wanted to copy the text somewhere else but I didn't want to take the formatting with it I perhaps wanted to apply a completely different type of formatting then these options give me ways of deciding whether I want to paste the formatting as well as the content. So if I hover over one or two of these and look at you look at the descriptions, the first one there says use the destination theme. What that really means is that if you're copying something, make the formatting the formatting of the destination. This one says keep the source formatting. That says if you're copying and paste something, keep the formatting it had at the start.
so put that into its new location as well as the content itself now a bit later on in the course we should be able to try one or two of those to see the effect but it's important to understand some of those paste special options the bottom entry there paste special actually brings up a paste special dialog which covers the main options you have when you're pasting and again we'll have one or two examples of that later on in the course so finally in this section what I'd like to do is to show you how to copy and paste whole slides it's pretty straightforward if I selected say the design slide here on the left the thumbnail of it if you right click on the slide on the contextual menu you have an option duplicate slide anyway but if I go further up the contextual menu there is a copy option Note when I've copied that slide to the clipboard the slide itself is still selected so if I do a paste now with keyboard shortcut control V it will be pasted after the selected slide so control V gives me a copy another one exactly the same so that one's design this one's design if I then wanted to make this my transition slide which is the next tab on the ribbon I can then click in there and so on. And that leads us to a straightforward little exercise now for you to do. We've been working from example 4 which had five of the standard tabs from the PowerPoint 2013 ribbon on it so we had six slides all together title slide and then five one per tab. I'd like you to complete that really and go up to the total of eight standard tabs which means there'll be nine slides each tab should contain three bullet points and the three bullet points are three of the groups on that tab my answer to that is saved as example five and I'll see you in the next section Hi everyone, Simon here from Simon Says It. Thanks for watching this video. If this is your first time here, I'd love for you to subscribe. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, new videos are uploaded to the Simon Says It channel here on YouTube. Just click on the subscribe button right over there. If you're interested in taking your Office 2013 training to the next level, you can get over 70 hours of Microsoft Office 2013 training offered by Simon Says It. Just check out the About section below this video with more details. We'll see you next week with additional videos.